think everything in life can get intimidating until you're comfortable with it. Yeah. And to get to that stage of being comfortable with it, you have to start somewhere. Yeah. You have to put yourself out there. Hello and welcome to the Desi Expats. Today we have a very very special guest. Uh so when Ali Samiksha and I had this idea of Desi Expats in our mind, one of the first guests that we had was this person. I've known her for 12 years. She's and she has continuously inspired me all this while. She's super fashionable, she's charming, she's kind and she's silly. The OG of the fashion blogging world. the magnus opus in akshi kanaja in akshi hi sajan <laughs> thank you hi sajan hi, hi ali hello <laughs> that was a very sweet introduction and likewise to you sajan i've known you for so many years and you inspire me every single day so i'm very happy to be here and well done guys on starting your podcast <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you for having me <laughs> yeah. so uh, i think people have known you uh, for this super fancy fashion thing uh your lifestyle blogging food blogging but today the idea is to get your bakchod self out <laughs> <laughs> to show to show people the inakshi that i know yeah. and uh, so so i i remember uh, college gave us few days all pink oh really <laughs> i was going to wear pink today <laughs> And, and and that was the moment i like realized oh i have arrived in delhi <laughs> super fashionable so yeah yeah i mean i was talking to sajan as well and he was telling me a bit about your story and it it, it was quite fascinating for me um learning how you came here as a master student for kings college and then going from that to the front row of the london fashion week as one of the most popular indian bloggers out there like for me it's very fascinating and i'm sure other people would love to know about it <laughs> so i mean I, i think we start from the beginning what, what was uh, growing up in delhi like and what was uh, what was the university experience like over there mm, um <laughs> delhi yeah as as sajan said it's very like stereotypical and very like um <clears throat> a lot of people have a lot of these like stereotypes about delhi but i'll probably like take a step back and talk about my childhood yeah. <laughs> um so where like this fashion streak came from was uh, when i was growing up so this memory is like very clear in my head when we used to come back from school a lot of kids used to like go for like out go out for playing and like people would like even with barbie dolls people would play ghar ghar and people would play with barbie dolls okay so i was this one person who loved barbie dolls not to play with them and i realized this later on that i used to come back home and design clothes of those barbies so i used wow. to go to the tailor with my mom and then get those like scratches of clothes yeah. like those like small small like scrapes yeah. scrapes scraps scrapes <laughs> of like clothes <laughs> but jaate jo bach jaate hai right i was like tell the tailor uncle ki jo bhi aapke bach jaye fek na mat i take <laughs> Okay. And then I had this drawer. One side where there were Barbie dolls, and one side where there were like, what clothes? Ke sare pieces cut out. So I used to come back home from school. Didn't sleep during afternoon. A lot of like kids used to take nap, and my mom used to take a nap, and she used to like force me to take naps. But that was my time to just be with my Barbie yeah. dolls and design clothes. <laughs> so I used to like. I remember there was like, like. like looking back now um for like a 5 6 year old girl who's just like you know like making these clothes so i think that's where my love for fashion and that's where my creative streak started as well like um very young like very early on and i think this is what i would tell everyone just like maybe think about your childhood mm-hmm. what did you like growing up and make that your hobby and like incorporate that somehow into your side hustle into your hobby like a side hustle doesn't have to be something that you know comes to you that's uh, a fad or that's in trend it can also like be something that you have always loved growing up and you just like never got to do it as a career right yeah. mm-hmm. so i think that is where um it all started and it only hit me a few years later that oh shit yeah, i was this girl who used to dress up my babies yeah. instead of like playing ghar ghar with them yeah, no i won <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> no well, that's very interesting that like the point that you made about discovering it later at some point in your yeah. life because at that point you don't know 
राइट उस टाइम इज जस्ट मेरा एक शौक है ओके आई लाइक डूइंग ऑल ऑफ दिस राइट बट इट्स ओनली लेटर ऑन आई थिंक सम पॉइंट यू टेक टाइम टू रिफ्लेक्ट इन योर लाइक ओके मे बी आई वॉन्ट टू डू दिस एज अडल आई जूम यू डेंट हैव दैट लाइक बिकॉज यू डेंट गो टू फैशन स्कूल और समथिंग लाइक दैट सो एट दैट पॉइंट यू वर्ड weren't probably thinking of this right yeah so it was never like a career option at yeah. the time like if like someone would have like and i was i was quite studious and i knew i wanted to work in finance i knew i wanted like do or not finance but i knew i wanted to do like a corporate job and i wanted to like have a corporate side but it never occurred to me that i could be a fashion designer or mm. i could like you know design clothes for i'm i'm sure there is someone who designs clothes for barbie dolls and that's also a career <laughs> option <laughs> but like it now it doesn't occur to you right because like growing in an indian yeah. household you're like padhai karni hai college jana yeah. hai marks lane hai you know like that that is yeah. a career path you're meant to take or like shaadi karni hai for girls is like college jana hai shaadi karni hai. so you know you don't think about these things that yeah. i'm enjoying this as a hobby i might as well take it as a career but i think if you can't take something as your career option just have a side hustle around it yeah. just yeah. do it Absolutely. like on the side do it as passion and just make something yeah. out of yeah, it i feel like mm-hmm. when it comes comes to our like subcontinent culture hame na ek playbook di jati hai exactly ke tum ye marks leke aao ye careers choose karo right yeah. and the idea that you could do something in the creative world or you could do something away from that play like not following the playbook is is just doesn't occur in our or yeah. in our minds i think at least exactly. when we're back home exactly. um i feel like when you go abroad maybe you have that type of exposure and you're seeing pe- other people do it and you're like okay maybe i should start as well yeah. um i think uh, we we took yeah. the inspiration from inakshi uh, so I was a very talkative kid, <laughs> and hence the desi expert. Oh my God! <laughs> yes. See. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, you want to tell people your marks? I think pe- people know uh, this OG fashion blogger. How much did you score into it? That like let's uh, let's uh, put out the asli vogish affair. <laughs> so yeah. So so basically after. I think around like when I was fourteen, my dad passed away, and you know the story, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so taking a step back from university as well, and why I uh, why I scored those marks. So just to give backstory, so I was very young when I lost my dad, and uh, very early on, I realized that now I have to do something with my life, and I have to work hard, and I have to study. Like this is something that I can't take seriously because now I have. a future to take into my hands so in my 12th grade i didn't study ma- like i was always studious and i would give 100% credits to my parents for that they always like encourage me to study well but also do extra curriculars so i was always into like dancing debates theater i was always into extra curricular and studies were like theek hai 80 85 aa rahe hain kaam chal raha hai okay and uh, in 12th i remember i had this like realization ki no i need to get into a good college i need to like make my own career because i don't have anything to fall back on i don't have a brother i don't have a father like we don't have man in the house to like fall back on so then in the last 6 months of my 12th i gave my all into studies like i used to study so much that i used to put a hot water bottle in my hoodie to like basically because my back used to hurt so much That's because crazy. of like yeah. practicing maths and accounts and i used to love doing maths and accounts i love like finance i love numbers that is also something i really enjoy so it wasn't a chore but i something i enjoyed and um hot word <laughs> with hot water bottle <laughs> i was like chalo it's, like that's how you get into srcc <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that, 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 that's that, that's the secret guys you want to do well in life just have a hot bottle in your body <laughs> so um but then also something else that i did was like for every subject hmm. i used to think how can i have an x factor because hmm. if it's an english exam can i like add quotes about each oh. uh, sub each like subject or each um, क्या बोलते थे उसको लाइक ईच टॉपिक सो आई लाइक लर्न टू फ्यू कोर्ट्स एंड आई लाइक ओके लाइक नाउ लाइक हाउ विल आई मेक माई आंसर स्टैंड आउट फ्रॉम अदर किड्स सो आई थिंक दैट इज समथिंग ऑल्सो आई वर्क डॉन हाउ विल आई लाइक ड्राफ्ट माई आंसर सो दैट इट स्टैंड आउट सो आई डिड गेट नाइन्टी सिक्स परसेंट एंड आई वॉज द इंडिया टॉपर फॉर इकोनॉमिक्स एंड बिजनेस स्टडीज Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But I think I would credit mm-hmm. all of the hard work um, yeah. in the last six months, in the eight, like the entire eighteen years of my life, to get to that point. That okay, smart work is important. You need to study hard in life, but also do a bit of smart work. You know, 
um kahan pe you can add an extra factor into your life and everything yeah and then you will see the results if you work hard if you add a bit of smart work bit of x factor you will get 96% i i know very important <laughs> a lot of people think it's just about the hard work yeah but oh, yeah. it's also about where you're putting that energy like Correct. finding those leverage points ke acha yahan se mujhe sabse zyada fayda hona i can do all of that but like if i do these two things and put 80% there then i'll get more out of it Correct. Um, but do you think i mean i i was just thinking about this while you were saying uh, all this like do you think that also applies in the work you're doing in the fashion blogging hmm. um world and i think a lot of people would want to know about because uh, Saj and I were talking about it, and so many people have this obscure view of okay, what does it mean to be a blogger? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, how do people start? How do you, how do you identify those leverage points? Okay, these are the things I should focus on. Yeah. Um, but I think people would love to know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So fashion blogging started in a whim. Um, I had finished college, um, and as Sajan said, I loved fashion. Like I was this girl who would dress up and think. Like so, that is something like and like growing up, my childhood story as well. So um, after I finished college, I joined a startup as a placement. I was there for six months, but it wasn't very fulfilling. Hmm. And I knew eventually I want to move to London. London was always a dream place that I wanted to like come to, and we can come to that later yeah. on as well. Um, so fashion blogging it started during that time when I was in that job, but I was preparing to come to London for a masters. And at the time, blogging was very new. It was called blogging. Now it's called influencing, content creation, yeah. and like so many terms. It's twenty twenty fourteen, right? This was twenty fourteen, uh, August twenty fourteen. So I just like uh, started, started a website. Vogueishaffair dot com. Uh, yeah. I remember. Oh, it was a website. <laughs> it yeah. was a website. Oh, Instagram wasn't a thing at the time. Yeah, yeah. O- OG <laughs> for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was two thousand and fourteen, um, yeah. August, and I remember. I had just like come back from work, and I was like, I'm gonna do it. And a lot of people were making blogs at the time, so I googled like how to start a blog, and then it was blogspot. dot com or something. Uh, this name came up because I think vogueish means stylish, and affair means like a stylish affair. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I started this website. Um, went on to my terrace, took a few pictures. Like I think my first picture was like ripped denim jeans and like a denim affair, and like started writing about it. So it was very structured in a way that. I would click pictures, but I was also like focused on writing about fashion at the time more than clicking pictures. And then I went to the office next day, and there was just one IT guy in my office, and I was like, "Can you make an app for me?" <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, "Kaisi matlab app kya blah blah." And I was like, "Ye maine blog banaya, to isko app mein convert kar de." So um, and he he was like this like IT developer, and he was quite open to the idea. He was like, "Yeah, let's do it." So then we made an app. It's called Vogueish Affair. <laughs> wow. Like nobody would have opened that app, but at the time you were like you're you're young, and you have these ideas. Yeah. So yeah, so we made that app, and I would trans, I would add everything to Blogspot. He would transfer it to the app. Wow. So then I realized, okay, there is something in this in this industry. Like I'm enjoying it, and then brands started reaching out. So the first collab I had was with Satya Paul because at the time small brands didn't recognize what blogging is. It was only like big designers mm. and brands who were um, exposed to international culture. Only they knew about blogging. So then Satya Paul had an event and they said, um, "Do a giveaway and ask people to come for the event." So I did a giveaway, um, asking like whoever wins the giveaway will come to the event with me. and they were like okay you can open it to a few more people and you were like i was shocked there were so many people who wanted to come and meet these bloggers and they were like they went to satyapal so like we want to meet we want we want to meet inakshi and I, and satyapal people were like you have so many people coming in for you and i was like shit i didn't realize that there are actually girls out there who are watch who are reading this blog and they're actually showing interest so that's when i realized the power of blogging and i realized that okay i need to like do this like this is something that has potential and i think coming back to your point that you have to do hard work and smart work but you also need to like yeah do smart work okay this is working let me stick to it yeah. like let me put my energy into what is working so what, what, what's that what's that feeling like i i think it's very um it's got a unique feeling where someone's sending you a dm and saying okay what you've done really helped me or i i yeah. used your idea 100% yeah mm-hmm. i think 100% and that's why like i try to like 
there was a time when I was probably I never wanted to post as a brag. Like I I don't want to tell people, you know, buy this thing, buy that thing. Mm. I want them to learn something yeah. from my page. Yeah. And as you said like if you can inspire like one person to your blog, then that means you have touched one life, right? Yeah. And if if a fashion student looks at your blog and gets inspired to do marketing, you have touched someone's entire career. Like they're going to make living out of it, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I think it's a good feeling to but wow. um, tell me one thing you, you uh, reached this blue tick milestone last week so first of all congratulations <laughs> on that uh 2014 till now you, you have consistently been blogging and and i have been like looking at your work you, you're doing a fabulous job out there and last week you got blue tick it wouldn't have been easy right like you have some perseverance how did you persist i'm sure there would have been days like you know you ask yourself oh i'm putting myself out there to i want it or not want like how was it how did you persevere so much i think you're right sajin that everyone has those moments right everyone is human i am human there are days when i don't want to post anything but what you said about perseverance if you're not quitting you're growing right if you're mm. consistent with something then it means you're growing if, like if you're waking up doing something you're growing okay like growth doesn't have to be like you don't have to like see a financial benefit or something if you're just like doing something you're growing so 2014 i started um i did shut my blog for a bit because i i was moving to london starting a new life here I was a desi expat no. <laughs> um doing my masters trying to get a job because blogging wouldn't give you a visa so all of that was going on parallel and i and i did take a step back at one point but then again i think in life you have to pivot right you mm. have to like realize when do you have to take a step back from something and when do you have to like put your energy into something and i was like read i think i was like i saw this one video um where someone was saying i think it was sundar pichai where he was saying that your life and different elements of your life are different like balls that you're juggling glass balls so if you like keep juggling five six glass balls at some point and i'm like basically like butchering this but like what what it meant was if you're juggling different glass balls at some point something will will like fall off mm. and break so at some point you have to keep some things aside in your life and then juggle two three things and then okay like put those aside juggle two three things so i think i did have to like stop for a bit to answer your question it wasn't like um linear it wasn't like straight up i've been doing this but it, there has been ups and downs uh, i i think also yeah. when it comes to like blogging or any type of social media i guess one of the fears that people have is you know sort of the fear of putting themselves out there and yeah. what are people going to think and i i'm asking that because i had this fear before i started this podcast as well yeah. uh, and i'm sure i mean all of us <laughs> um, we were shit scared <laughs> i mean <laughs> we still are did you ever have that at any point i know you were doing this for a long time ago but like when you did start did you have that and how how do you think you sort of came over it or is it still there I mean kudos to you yeah. guys because like people watching don't realize how intimidating this room can be yeah. <laughs> because like <laughs> there's like so many like cameras and yeah. mics and like recording stuff yeah so I think everything in life can get intimidating until you're comfortable with it yeah and to get to that stage of being comfortable with it you have to start somewhere yeah you have to put yourself out there to do like you both have moved to london right from from like your comfort zone yeah you had to put yourself out there to learn and grow right so i think same for blogging as well it can be intimidating in the way because you have like strangers watching your content and you don't know mm. how it's like coming across as yeah. well right like l- luckily there are not that many negative comments but it is scary and you don't want to put everything out there either yeah i would say one shouldn't overshare either yeah like i take it as a job mm. like if i'm going to the office doing my work coming back home to my real life that is how i think of instagram and that is how i've started thinking of instagram now yeah i mm. have to go into my work log into that app it's my work do some research post what i need to post thoda bahut friends ka ek do thoda bahut idhar dekh liya and then come out of it you know come back yeah. to your real life mm. because if you if you won't come back to your real life then you will get like sucked into this like 
fear of like comparison and like fear of like people judging you if you're going to the to the office you're not thinking lift me kon mujhe judge kar raha hai mm. you're not when you're presenting a powerpoint presentation yeah. and like whenever you're presenting <laughs> like your like uh, scripts that you present at work you're not thinking kon mujhe judge kar raha hai you're there to present and do yeah. your work and come out and i take instagram like that as well that's interesting yeah i think it's yeah. very important like with social media you can really get sucked into it right i mean there's mm-hmm. this people and it's very common now where people are just living their lives on social media so yeah. i think it's very important to do like thinking in terms of what i can get out of it rather than just giving giving you know yourself to the app yeah right? yeah yeah, and yeah. You, you mentioned about uh, oversharing i i think uh, one of the f- fine line the, so there's a very fine line between showing your work and uh, oversharing so spamming and giving content to people how do you figure like where is the where is that fine line and how do you pick that content you know i've recently and i used to do that as well like i am guilty of posting randomly whatever's in my head i would put it on my story if i'm in a bad mood i would put up a i would put up five quotes about like feeling sad right <laughs> we, <all have> <laughs> we all have been there i have been there as well but now that book that you recommended me show your work yeah. oh my god you guys have to read this book called show your work it is such an amazing book and one line in that book is don't show your lattes don't show your coffee show your work like yeah. like if i'm posting a picture and i used to do that too if i'm posting a picture of a preth coffee great like i'm giving marketing to preth in a way yeah. but what is that giving to my followers mm. they follow me for fashion and food or like mainly fashion so like me showing ki aaj main bahut sad hu aur aaj maine kuch nahi kiya aaj maine bas coffee pi how will that motivate someone yeah. right and if i'm going to work i will not add in my powerpoint slide aaj main bahut sad hu aaj maine coffee pi no they want to know what yeah. is the financials <laughs> behind risk and controls yeah. so here and there like yeah. you know so i just think of it as work now and the book that you recommended helped me um change that so i think just like reading a lot taking time out for yourself thinking before you're doing anything mm-hmm. makes a big difference and and to be honest with you guys like this is this is all sounding very rosy but it's taken me a l- lot to get to this point mm-hmm. i think from the last like 3 4 years up until last year i was very brain fogged and like you as a friend would like i wasn't even connecting too much to my friends you, you like I don't know like if like you have followed my journey like closely as a friend like and as I have followed your journey closely <laughs> as your friend like, but 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 I was very brain fogged like last he for just before covid and during covid I was not thinking and I think that's very normal everyone yeah. gets to a stage Absolutely. where they're brain fogged and you have to like do things to change that if you're feeling that you're feeling brain fogged if you're feeling that you know you're not thinking before doing something then you should take a step back and change that so i think that really helped there's one mm. um, fashion question i have um <laughs> i love fashion questions <laughs> yeah or i mean this is this is this is sort of come out of all the um so sort of girls that i've had as as friends right i mean they they've all they've all had this problem um because so, so you're working in banking as well so you're doing a corporate role um when we were starting out and we were starting our jobs out one of the things that you that comes in your mind is getting a work wardrobe right aur bandon ke liye na bada aasan hota mujhe yaad hai mera work wardrobe mujhe 2 ghante lage the aur sari ha do suit lene panch shirts leni hai do colors ki ek joote and that's it you're set right but for 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 my friends like for my girl, girl uh, friends the, it was it was a huge thing like for them they couldn't decide unko kai do do hafte lag jate the i think it's 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 very difficult for for women in in the workplace in terms of deciding what to wear because there's no set uniform like you have for men um i don't know if you you've thought about that or or what your experience was with that Yeah I think this is very true like sometimes I go into work and I see these men at work wearing a white shirt every day and I'm like I'm so jealous <laughs> like you can just rock up in a white shirt every day and like girls have to like think so but actually you know what if you want to wear a white dress every day to work do it don't 
I think fashion should be a reflection of your personality. You shouldn't change your personality 360 degrees just because you want to like come across as a very like serious person at work. Mm. If your personality mm. is goofy and if your personality is like chill, mm. relaxed, just do that. Like don't oh, like people at work will know you for the work that you're putting in. Firstly, wow. people shouldn't overthink um, the work wardrobe. But I do agree, like there are, as per psychology of fashion, <laughs> there are some colors that do make you come across as more professional. Like, for example, if you wear like navy, um, dark, like I think dark, dark red, so maroon and navy and black, they can like instantly make you come across as more professional. So you can like do research as to how others will perceive you if you wear certain clothes and then you can design your wardrobe according to that. But I think what I do is I have these like pair of white pants and black pants and I just keep changing my tops yeah. or like I have these like standard blazers that I just like keep um, wearing with different things. So I think you're you don't have to wear something new every day. And whenever I'm buying something, I think how can I style this in five ways? That is yeah. uh, that is what I think about every look. Like if I'm wearing a pant, like if I'm buying a blazer, I'm like, okay, how can I style this in like four five ways? And I rewear my clothes. Like girls, like <laughs> just yeah, you re-wear ka bada your clothes. Yeah, <laughs> 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 bandiyon ka bada masle. They are like <laughs> every time. Achha, I'm holiday pe ja rahi hoon. I need to buy an entire holiday. <laughs> like I need four five sets of new clothes. I can't rewear the same thing. <laughs> You, you know, and that's where like these fashion blogs and yeah. these uh, like posts help you that how can you wear that thing differently? Yeah. If you're buying a cord, you wear a top with other things, you wear pants with other things, you know, just reinvent your wardrobe. Have some capsule wardrobe looks and then just reinvent it. And if you have a washing machine, you give it to dry clean. Pe de do. Like, you know, peep, the, and I think it's changing. People are now becoming more sustainable about fashion. It has changed over the last few years. People are now mm. uh, like selling their clothes or like um, donating their clothes, buying secondhand clothes. Like it's changing now, buying like quality over quantity. And that yeah. is some that is a big yeah. change that I'm seeing in the fashion world. And that's that's for good, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think with men's fashion, it's a bit easier because as long as you stick to the basics, <laughs> as long as you don't play around too much, you're fine. Yeah. But I think in women's fashion, it's hard to, or maybe I don't know much about it, but I've never heard this that, okay, basics, right? Okay, like for men, you have the black t-shirt and, and the jeans and all of that. And you know, as long as you're doing that, you're fine. Yeah. But with women, it's there's so much you have to think about. Um, and so much you can play around with, I guess, with accessories and everything, right? Yeah, so. I have a question to both of you yeah. before, like, you like ask me my next question. As men, okay, hmm. how do you perceive women who are? Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say overdressed. Okay, there's no thing, no such thing as overdressed. How do you perceive women who are fashionable or like? Obviously, it's very subjective, but I've been told in the past that when you're going on a first date, just tone down. <laughs> like, where, like, just tone down a bit. But I'm like, that is my personality. Like, you know, if someone's personality is to, like, be very fashionable, if someone's personality is to wear a hoodie on a first date, they shouldn't force themselves to, like, wear a dress on a first date. You wear what you are comfortable with and the other person, you know, like, should take it yeah. in. But as men, how do you perceive fashion in women? So, uh, depends, of course, on the occasion. But uh, I really love uh, women who tend to get bold with their fashion. I, In fact, uh, I love that audacity. So, uh, at my office, I, I see people, there are certain women who are dressed very boldly. They wear nice pop colors, neons, and uh, or, you know, really badass sneakers and or or shorts or something like that i really love that and in fact even for myself i at least in banking i'm in uh, uh uh tech retail so i'm i like to be pulled in office i like to go in shorts sometimes uh fancy shorts not like ordinary shorts please <laughs> <laughs> um i like to wear pop colors i like to try out that diff like mm -hmm. different uh things in fashion and and yeah it, nobody says anything and uh, if at all like i have always been like complimented been complimented for my uh, yeah. fashion sense um yeah so, and actually tumhare se puch rahi hai agar date pe bandi hoodie pehen ke aayi 
यार ड्रेस पहन के आई तुम्हें क्या बेहतर रही है यार अगर वो हुडी भी पहन के आ रही है ना थोड़ी बैड है हुडी होनी चाहिए अच्छा इट शुड बी या यू यू कांट जस्ट So, so you want it, someone to make an effort into their not, outfit? No, uh, not really. I, I think uh, controversial it's, it's, topic. It's, it's, it's <laughs> not about how much effort you put, but it's or what are you wearing? It's about how you're carrying it. Yeah, yeah. correct. That really matters a lot. I mean, you have to. I love to be in my gym wear, and if mm. there's a woman who is in her gym wear or something like that, then the way she's carrying herself matters a lot. if she's comfortable if she's carrying it well and oh, like confident be carrying absolutely. it absolutely mm. correct i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, i was just thinking about it ke like let's say it's a first date theek hai or i mean kisi aap achhi jagah ja rahe ho right yeah. like let's say your brunch pe you're in mayfair or somewhere bandi hoodie pehn ke aagi what would i feel about that mm-hmm. um i don't know i think this is my preference i do like it when like the girl is making an effort and she's like dressing well and all of that um yeah i so dress i think, for I think the occasion. yeah dress it? for the occasion and like do like i do prefer when someone's putting like effort into the way they're looking yeah. right uh, i know someone can like there's some people who can pull off the effortless thing well, i mean uh, it's just not for me i guess <laughs> i think there are two different kinds of yeah people. so yeah. so bo- think... both the kinds exist so we mm. are here to confuse women yeah <laughs> <laughs> as they do so, I mean, the, 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 the answer is just know the guy you're going out with well like just like think about what that person is like and what their preferences mm. are going to be like so yeah. i think i'm taking two things from this conversation like first like whatever you're comfortable and just carry it well yeah. whatever is float whatever floats your boat you should mm-hmm. carry it well yeah. and then secondly like make an effort like dress for the occasion yeah. like if you know there is a dress code for a party it's also disrespectful for the other yeah. for the host if you're like not following the dress code so yeah i think both both um align and i, I think yeah. it applies to men as well like I, i feel like what you're wearing is sort of a reflection of and it doesn't have to be like fancy or expensive or anything but the fact that you're making an effort in your appearance means just means mm-hmm. that you know you're you're investing in yourself yeah or and m- more than that i think it's also about i respect you if i'm dressing up for you yeah yeah so uh i mean i can't go to meet an important person just in you know my my pajamas Correct. it could look cool yeah but you know you also have to ensure that oh you know this is my way of telling you Mm. I respect you. I decked up for you. Yeah. So, Correct. Yeah. Mm. But uh th- this brings me to my uh, uh next question. You started this trend uh on fashion psychology. Mm-hmm. It's been doing very well and only mm. half a million views, sure. right? Half a million. I was looking at one of the videos <laughs> and you were talking about how if you wear brown then you know the other person can your person you're talking to will open up to you. So I'm brown pen ke aage ab dekhte hain kaam kar raha hai. <laughs> yeah that is very true so brown yeah. actually because it's an earthy tone yeah. it le- it le- it gives the other person a sense of you know familiarity because when yeah. we walk on, like earthy tones are all around us so it it gives you a sense of familiarity and then you like open up to the other person and same for like light blue as well it's it's come it come comes across as a trustworthy color um and i'm wearing orange today <laughs> but i'll tell you what psychology of fashion is and then i'll tell you why i'm wearing orange and how like it impacts your life so this um So because like I've been blogging for so many years I do try to pivot my content depending on what's working giving something new out there like making it educational and I wanted to do psychology of fashion mainly because I didn't want to tell people what to wear and I was bored of telling people to go and buy the new Zara dress that's out today no. like if someone doesn't want to like buy that new Zara dress out that's out today like they don't they shouldn't have to they should just know what they're wearing can impact their mood and that is what psychology of fashion is about like what you wear can impact your own mood and it can also impact how others perceive you hmm. um 
and it happens not just with outfits it happens with everything around you like if you look at a certain color you you feel some emotions unconsciously mm. okay and that's your that's the psychology of fashion and there's a psychology behind every like there's science behind everything i believe in that uh, so um, so for example wearing orange um, so orange combines the the energy and the ra- like vibrancy of red and it combines the happiness of yellow So when these two colors are put together it shows um, enthusiasm and it shows stimulation because it takes up the best qualities of both these like red and yellow colors so i think the way like you dress and the color that you wear the accessories that you wear have has a huge impact on how your mood is and how others mood is so the other day i would like walked into work and this lady um came into the lift and she was wearing a yellow suit mm. in a corporate bank where everyone is yeah. dressed up in like blacks and navies and yes. whites she like rocked up in this like head to toe yellow suit and i was like wow that like instantly like made me cho- like that that uh, had an impact on my mood and now that image is like so strong in my head so i think what you wear really impacts um how your day goes how others perceive you how your mood is so i don't want to like tell people what the latest fad is and i don't want to tell people what to wear because as you said yeah. your you like gym wear you like comfy clothes and as you said if you're going to a nice restaurant you want to dress up accordingly so i don't want to tell people what to wear i just want to give them the information that they can use depending on their life yeah and so, circumstances so that's so meaningful so, you, you know one thing that um I've always I don't know why but I've always found that um, it's called monochromatic right if you're wearing the same color yeah. I I just feel like people look much better if they're wearing a mo- like you're wearing a monochromatic outfit right now yeah. do you know what the like idea behind that is or the psychology behind that well, I've always been fascinated with the psychology yeah. behind that yeah. you know like so so for example some people like organization yeah some people like routine and some people get high on chaos Hmm. or not but like some people get high on contrast right hmm. okay so like if someone has a personality that gives them a high, and both are right like if someone has a personality where they like to do multiple things they like to juggle different things and they get adrenaline from it then they will ra- like contrasting colors and bright colors okay. or not just bright but like colors from the opposite spectrum right purple and yellow together but like if someone likes routine that's that, that's you buddy was well. <laughs> <laughs> you li- like vibrancy yeah, in your yeah. life right oh, absolutely but at the same time if someone likes organized routine i don't know if that is that true but you do like your organized the, 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 morning I, while you were saying routine. that i was like shit that's why i like monochromatic outfits mujhe apni routine bahut pasand hai cuz you like you don't want like you want to like look at the same color yeah it'll otherwise like it'll be like oh kya ho raha hai yeah. like so i think that that there's ah. psychology behind that's very cool fashion yeah. <laughs> there's certain very days cool. i like yeah. monochromatic and yeah. certain days i'm just popping out <laughs> just uh, yeah. maybe like uh, if, and if you guys like have some like input or insight just let me know like if you're wearing monochromatic on a day is your mind clear is your mind feeling organized have you mm. had a restful sleep did you journal that morning so like you know like these are the things mm. that impact your mood and your life and your fashion sense wow mm, that, that that's very um, very cool to know actually um <laughs> I think uh, one thing um I wanted to ask you about is I don't know if you follow like any Pakistani fashion designers or anything um I just wanted to know what you think are sort of the differences between Pakistani and in- Indian fashion and I don't know I feel like so a lot of my friends were from India they they're sort of staring away from eastern wear I I I'm, I'm not sure if women are but at least the men like um abhi, मैं अपने किसी इंडियन दोस्त से पूछना कि हाउ फू वे शलवार कमी दैट वैन यूर वैन यूर होम एंड दे टिपिकली डोंट बट एज इफ आई गो टू लाहौर आई थिंक एटी परसेंट ऑफ द टाइम इज वेरिंग शलवार कमीज एस्पेशली इन द समर आई डोट नो वट यू गाइज आई मीन यू गाइज नो सो पंजाब साइड थोड़ा है कि पीपल वेयर कुर्ता पजामा सा there is an occasion and people are very fond of it yeah, you you'll do it on occasions but normal uh-huh. matlab regular nahi exactly so pathani kurta aa jata hai and uh, so people like to wear kurta pajama yeah. and and you know there's a happy occasion when okay. they wear kurta pajama but uh jab tula aur gaya tha to main dekh raha tha ki 
there were people in kurta pajama yeah. and i huh. loved it so yeah. much wo shayad india mein itna nahi hai ha i just don't know why i mean what the reason for that is ha jabki kurta pajama is like super cool so mere papa especially in the summer yaar matlab like punjab ke summer ke andar tum jeans pehn rahe like how are you pulling that off but what is it for women i think that's very true and i think fashion should be borderless like yeah. it shouldn't be like so for example i love pakistani suits yeah. i love pakistani like fashion like you know the intricate details the embroidery the pearls but also the the like relaxed suits yeah. Oh, yeah. and the kurta yeah. pajama like i've seen so one of my really close friends um has moved back to pakistan she was from karachi when mm. whenever she posts pictures with her husband like he's in this white kurta so yeah. like it's very like refreshing to see that um and i think it's very similar indian and pakistani fashion is very similar in yeah. terms of um relaxed wear as well kurta pajama like even in like <laughs> in india like if someone wants to wear a kurta pajama at home they they wouldn't like shy away from oh. it you know right? yeah. uh, even like um here like so for example here as well i feel like there is a there is like indo western influence now yeah. and that is yeah. also something that i like to like post about that you can incorporate your indo westernness yeah. like or like i like asian westernness right mm. like to incorporate both like pakistan yeah. and india um so something like a kurta pajama you you sh- like if it's really hot you shouldn't feel yeah. ki nahi ye bahar hi pehen sakte hum yahan nahi pehen sakte main different lagunga yeah. just make your own normal make your new normal yeah. bring your culture to to london right <laughs> uh, so i think fashion should be borderless yeah. if something is working in one country <laughs> we should adopt it in other places yeah. as well yeah. right um so and, and, and i feel like there's, there's been so much influence as well right i mean we talk about eastern wear but like a lot like a, like a jodhpuri suit uh-huh. is essentially a british influence correct right? yeah. i mean essentially yeah. i mean we used to have those wo khuli sherwaniyan jo hoti hain uh-huh. right back in the day and then when when the british came we started yeah. to move more towards the pea coat make right make it a bit uh, make formal. it a bit formal and uh-huh. tighter and all of that yeah. and, and you had the jodhpuri suit so i agree like it is borderless yeah, uh, yeah. Even, even the shalwar kameez is not a It's not an indigenous uh, subcontinent thing. It, it's a Turkish thing that 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 the Turks oh, brought in. Uh, yeah. So I mean, yeah. the borderless uh, point bar, is quite true. Agli baar Ali Purtha Jamaa mein aayenge. Ha, let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> no, so uh, on this note, uh, I think the trend that I I've been noticing is uh, for men. So now they have these, uh, and and it's. Very recent uh, on Instagram. So men have this loose kurta. shirts they're not kurtas they're not shirts it's a mixture of two mm. sassy shurta oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the jokes i was talking about <laughs> but uh, i think uh, great to sort of talk about all the f- fashion part but uh, in akshay i think we have a rapid fire round for you okay <laughs> <laughs> shall we ali <laughs> go ahead yeah uh okay so i have rapid fire round uh you have to be very quick try not to think okay. and uh your top 3 restaurants in london top 3 top like favorite three yeah okay i really like royal china hmm. uh in baker street great for chinese food um colonel saab for indian <laughs> a great indian food and uh, coco chan for casual <laughs> japanese asian a uh, relaxed food where is it it's uh, it's near bond street station um very like relaxed vibe but great food mm-hmm. awesome uh your favorite fashion blogger oh. other than of course you yes, said <laughs> <laughs> um i really like komal pandey's content and i've seen her evolve mm-hmm. over the years so there's this indian blogger called komal pandey yeah. uh, i know it was meant to be rapid but i've known her for many years and i've seen like how she yeah. experiments with her fashion I I like Siddharth uh, Patra as well. He, yeah, he, correct. Both d- of them together. It, yeah. 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 Uh, favorite food blogger. Oh, truffle and toast. <laughs> <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> um, uh, three absolute no-nos as a blogger. Oh, don't overshare. Mm-hmm. It's gonna ruin your mental health. Always think of your mental health first. Um, be can, don't be inconsistent. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Yeah. 
just whatever you're doing put your heart into it and do it consistently okay those were too bad uh no nos for men fashion i don't like you do you boo like whatever <laughs> like you know floats your boat no, like no see, nos okay i, I need Cro- to get some masala out okay <laughs> <laughs> crocs please <laughs> do not wear ugly crocs <laughs> तू तू मुझे कह रहा था ना यार क्रॉक्स बड़े फिट और यू नो व्हाट मैं पहनता भी नहीं हूं समवन एल्स वाज सेइंग दिस आई एम लाइक अच्छा सही यू सही कह रहा होगा और लाइक रियली टाइट साइक्लिंग शॉर्ट्स लाइक यू नो सम थिंग्स आर गुड इन द जिम बट आई आई गेट वेयर यू आर कमिंग फ्रॉम थैंकफुली अर्ली एंड आई डोंट फॉल इन दैट एंड आल्सो गाइस आई मीन डोंट wear a t-shirt that has a big gucci logo on it oh my god yes don't do it <laughs> like, like. <laughs> <laughs> i mean if it's a real like yeah like quite luxury is quite in fashion these days but yeah, but, yeah. but you know you, luxury like if you can tone it down like this it's a thing right people gucci, 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 exactly gucci, 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 gucci. Yeah. and then there's that there's that uh, shirt that guys wear who har jagah dior 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 likha hota hai I'm like man you're a walking banner like you're doing free <laughs> advertisement for them <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unless you can pull it off and you're like doing it like in a classy way with like white pants hmm. and like toning it down but agar like wo if it's too in your face then yeah, yeah. agreed yeah. Yeah. if if you've got that vibe right yeah fuck boy vibe <laughs> essentially <laughs> and sometimes it's fake <laughs> and sometimes people wear these like things which are like pata chal raha hai ye fake hai logo idhar udhar teda meda hai like kyu karna hai you know <laughs> and you know i read this really good thing the other day if you buy the things you don't need you will soon have to sell the things you need mm-hmm. so just don't keep like buying like branded things just for the sake of it like save that money the yeah, people spend a lot of money on like i can't believe people spend money and they buy like 400 pound t-shirts just because it's got a logo on it yeah like, that's that's shit unless you're doing it for the quality unless you're doing it for like you know something that will last for example if you buy a really good leather bag yeah. and it's going to last you 20 years and it will remain the same then like you know and if you have like spelt change to splurge then yeah. do it i think that's especially true with accessories yeah mm. i feel like but whenever i mean i feel like if someone's spending 400 dollars on a shirt and it's called lb all over it i really doubt they're doing it for the quality yeah correct <laughs> agree <Okay. laughs> your top productivity hack time block don't multitask lovely i i, I know it's rapid fire but <laughs> I read this fact that only two percent people can multitask, and the ninety-eight percent mm. thing they're in that two percent category. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but but like, oh, very few people can multitask and succeed. Mm. So I mm. have started doing this time block. जो काम कर रहे हो दिल से करो और आगे बढ़ो and you'll be more productive in life. Well, what do you relate the most to? Blossoms, buttercup, or bubbles? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Sajan? <laughs> Uh, I think blossoms. Yeah. <laughs> blossoms no. were blossoms were red wali, yeah. Uh huh. Blossoms are red yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. <laughs> she, she uh, and she's the leader. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. yeah. So, uh, thing you absolutely suck at, absolutely. A lot of things. <laughs> I'm just thinking. What should I say? Should I say on national television? <laughs> um, I don't like. I think. Like a lot of times, I would give advice, but I I would not like follow it. For example, like and that's very normal. That's very human to like sometimes not taking your own advice. And and actually, you no, know, probably one thing I really suck at is opening up and like sharing my emotions. Like I would like suffer in silence and get my shit together rather than opening up. So I think that is something I really suck at and should do more often. So need to catch up with you more often. Yeah. <laughs> Last question. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, rate my fashion skills. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that coming. <laughs> no, I think you have a really good fashion sense. I would give you a solid nine. <laughs> On a scale of one to nine, I'm nine. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, that was Inakshi for you. And. Uh, Thanks guys for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming. This is so much fun. Time yeah. just flew by. Yeah. yeah. Good. Cool. <laughs> Thank you.